And hello, everybody. It is Tom Chenault. It's the Tom Chenault Show. It is a great day. We have got an unbelievable show for you today. We have got Noah St. John, and we've also got the one and only David Rutz, a dear friend of mine, not saying Noah St. John isn't. I've known Noah for a, a short amount of time. I've known David Rutz for many, many years. You're going to enjoy today's show. Next week, we've got Holton Bugs. You'll love him. We've got Louis Ariaza. He's also a rock star in his own right. So that's going to be a great show too. So get ready to go. This is going to be insanely great. You're going to love it. It's going to be fun. And now we go over to Noah St. John. This guy is amazing. I mean, he has raised the sales of companies that he's represented over $2 billion, which is preposterous. I can't even imagine how he's able to even quantify that, but he's an honest man with a beautiful wife and a great smile. And this guy is all about affirmations. He's just written a new book. You're going to love him. Noah St. John, how are you, my friend? Uh, it's so great to be back here, Tom, and always a delight to visit with you. Well, you are a beast, man. So tell me what's going on. You got another new book out. You got <laughs> every, but you're changing the world. You're doing free coaching to get people loaded up on what you do all over the world. And uh, you're pretty much cooking with gas, huh? Well, you know, Tom, it really is an honor. I've been uh, privileged and blessed to be able to help people and uh, make a difference, make an impact for people all around the world over the last 20 years. I started my company, successclinic.com, in my college dorm room in 1997 <coughs> with uh, $800 to my name and a book on how to do HTML. So uh, it's been quite a, quite a journey. And this is, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I got all choked up. <laughs> You're going to have to talk here for a second. Okay, I'll tell a joke. I don't know any jokes, but look at that. Now, you guys think he's, that's vodka. So he told oh, give me, me a gonna, break. <laughs> he told me he was going to get all liquored up because he was nervous. I didn't you believe know. Him. And now there's the coffee. So now he's swigging a little. And this is water. Drink. Give me a break. Okay. It's all water. All right. Anyway, this is this is the new book, Tom. I think I sent you I one it. of these. Did you get I the one. I got it. It's a tremendous book. Thank you. It's called Power Habits: The New Science for Making Success Automatic. So this is the main reason, Tom, <clears throat> that I've been able to help people to add multiple six and seven and yes, even eight figures to their business. So yeah, collectively, my clients over the last twenty years have added over two point two billion dollars. That's just that's just what I know about. It's probably four or five times more than that. But hey, you know what? My job isn't to hype it up. My job is to just tell it like it is and give people tools to, uh, for transformation. Okay. So everybody's got that breakthrough in them. You came from a place, obviously you grew up poor in a rich, in a rich neighborhood. I kind of like that line because that's a lot of people I know. And I was just yeah. coaching a couple of days ago, a guy from Detroit in the same boat. You know, he came from a very, very gross point neighborhood. And uh, he was the, he felt like he was the loneliest, most unsuccessful person there. He grew up poor in a rich neighborhood because it's all between your ears. It's not that exterior circumstance that mm -hmm. defines us, right? Well, you know, I talk about inner game and outer game. In any yeah. human endeavor, there are two components that we have to learn and we have to master. We, you know, at my company, at successclinic.com, we just call it inner game and outer game. So inner game is everything that happens between your ears that you can't see directly, but it affects everything that you do. So like, you know, when I do keynote speeches, when I'm speaking for network marketing companies or real estate events or entrepreneurial events, I'll often say to my audiences, what's one area of your life where your habits don't affect you? And they go, um, and I go, exactly, right? There's no place your habits don't affect you, right? Yeah. Think, think about your health, your, your weight, your relationships, your, uh, your family life, your social life, your business, your money, your finances. There's no place where your habits or, again, your inner game doesn't affect you. Your children are good. Your money is good. Your health's good. Your mental health is good. The whole shot. You feel like you're there. Well, I mean, look, Tom, I mean, life happens and, you know, there's always things that happen and, and you know, it can go up and down. And, and, of course, things happen that you don't expect, you know, and, and it's, you know what, I, that's why I love sports. I talk about sports a lot because sports are a microcosm of life. So when you're going after your goals, there's not necessarily so like I'm a big football fan. I love the New England Patriots. I grew up in New England. You mentioned, you know, Kenny Bunkport, Maine. That's where I grew up. So there was nothing else to do but watch sports back then. So we watched the, the Boston Red Sox and the New England Patriots and both teams sucked. They were awful. But of course, now they're, you know, the two best teams of the decade in their respective sports. 
uh, of the of the century actually so far. Uh, but anyway, my point is that you know when you're when you're looking at your goals, sometimes what I look at is you know what is the defense throwing at you. There's probably not a 300 pound linebacker trying to rip your head off, you know, in your business. But there are certain things that are going to happen that maybe you can't anticipate. So what I like to, you know, I use that analogy of, you know, you look at what the defense is giving you, and then you still have to make adjustments throughout the game. So, you know, I, I, I'm not perfect. I don't think anybody's perfect. But, you know, we're always trying to get better. We're always trying to help more people, make a bigger impact, transform more lives. Um, and, you know, what's nice is to have that framework. That's what the power habit system is all about, you know, that I talk about in the new book is really about understanding what habits really are, why so many people are holding themselves back from the success they're capable of, and then having that framework so you can allow yourself to succeed to your full capacity. How many books have you written? This is number 15, actually. This, uh, this one right here, number 15. So, you know, it all started with this one back here, Permission to Succeed from the Chicken Soup People. Then we had the Harper Collins books, Code of Success. Then the affirmations from Hay House that you mentioned. So, um, oh, we also have Get Rid of Your Head Trash About Money. I think you and I talked about that one a while back. So, now, yeah, wait, summer 15. So, but, so uh, now you asked me where excited. my bookcase was. Remember when you asked me where my bookcase was? Yes. And the last time you were on the show, we yeah. were talking about get rid of the head trash. And what you said to me, where are my other 14 books? Hey, man. <laughs> yeah. So everybody, every author, whether it's Eric Worre or Richard Brooke or John Fogg or Rob Sperry or Ray Higdon or Fraser Brooks, every one of those guys, if I didn't have the right book behind me, they were raising hell with me. So finally, I just said, we've got to move it downstairs where it is the desert wasteland, just me on the screen, where we can just talk about your book without having everybody dozing off and looking over my shoulder. So that's why I did that. So you just proved up my point. But go into your new book. I want to talk about that because I happen to believe you're right on the money. I was trying to get that book away from Adrian today, and I wasn't able to do it because it has changed his life too. Wow. And the reason I say that is because when you're starting a startup, you've got to be moving at a thousand miles an hour and literally everybody's trying to distract you in one way or another. And yep. what your book did was give him the focus to stay completely in the lane of his priorities. Would you agree with that? Well, that's, I'm certainly glad to hear that. That's one of the things that we help people with. You know, one of the things I talk about all the time, Tom, is that, you know, we live in a world of infinite distractions. At our fingertips, we have what I call the IDD. That's the infinite distraction device. That's at our fingertips 100% of the time. Did you know that 90% of Americans, Tom, sleep with their phones within arm reach? And I'm like, I, I get why people do that, but that is insane. Do you do I that? Never sleep with the phone in the bedroom. Never. Do you do that? Never. I don't. The phone is not in the bedroom. I won't have it because I don't want to be distracted. I mean, do you, do you realize that most people, when they wake up, one of the first things they do is they check their social media feed. And do you know that numerous scientific studies, this is one simple example, but numerous scientific studies show that the more time you spend consuming social media, the more depressed you get. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't use social media. I didn't say that. What I'm saying is there's two ways to use social media, this tool, right? And that is you can use it as an entrepreneur and you can use it as a consumer. Right now, the bit, the companies, you know, the Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, et cetera, they want you to use it as a consumer, right? Because they want to sell you more stuff. They want to show you more ads so that they make more money. Hey, that's nothing wrong with that. They're not bad people. They're, you know, this is America. It's a capitalist society. We want to make money. The point is, if you have in your head that you're gonna just get distracted and it's gonna take you away from making the money or having the impact that you want, you're not using it properly. So, you know, our good friend Ray Higdon and Jess Higdon, you know, they talk about how to use social media as an entrepreneur, not as a consumer, you know, but you're, of course you're gonna be reaching consumers. That's just one simple example of power habits and how really they can be affecting you without even your conscious awareness. I like that, I like that a lot. I think you're right. Um, you believe in God? Yes. Okay, good. So do I. And so here's the deal. I happen to believe if I think of somebody, I'm supposed to call them. So I have my phone right next to my bed. Because right. if I think about somebody, I just wake up and I hit send. And if they answer the phone, they were supposed to answer. And if they don't answer the phone, they weren't. And I think that's probably a pretty good thing that I'm doing. But in your world, that would be pretty bad because you'd miss my call at three in the morning a lot. <laughs> Well, listen, see, you're proving my point, Tom, because you're using this as a, you're using this tool, again, the infinite distraction device, 
you're, you're not being distracted. You're actually using it as, again, I'm using the words, using it as an entrepreneur, right? Or, you know, in your, in your world, you use it for those connections that you're so great at building, which of course does help you build your business and make that impact that we all want. So I would argue you're doing it right. Um, and just because I'm not answering the phone doesn't mean that I'm still not thinking of you too. Okay, and you call that an IUD? <laughs> no. I D D. I knew you were going to do that. I was ready for that. To, all right, I'm just trying to figure it I out. I was ready. <laughs> okay, it was a pretty funny joke. I, I knew to, you were going to do I it. I had to tee it up. So, okay, so the, the normal listener out here has never heard of you, unfortunately. I met you at Higdon's. I fell in love with you. I've had you on the, road, on the show a couple of times because I believe you provide value. So the person out there listening right now that is listening for the first time, trying to break through, what are you gonna tell them to do right now, Noah? The first thing that I'm gonna tell you to do is write down what your, um, there are two kinds of habits that I, that, you know, and again, this is what's helped people make millions and millions and millions of dollars. First step right now is write down the habits that you're doing that are unproductive. Now, at my company and, you know, in my, my $25,000 coaching clients, we don't use the term good habits and bad habits. What we say is productive versus unproductive. Because we think if, we, if you start saying, oh, that's a good habit, that's a bad habit, that's like a label that doesn't really help you, right? It doesn't really empower you to make those changes that you want to make. So we just would rather say productive versus unproductive. Now, a productive habit is, of course, a habit that's pushing you or driving you towards your desired end result. I call that your pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, right? So a productive habit is moving you towards your goal. An unproductive habit, of course, is either pulling you away from that goal or just maybe keeping you stuck, right? So right now, everybody watching this program can right now write down what is an unproductive habit that I'm doing. So a classic example that I like to use at my live events or when I'm doing keynote speeches uh, for companies is I say, how many people feel that procrastination is a problem, right? And of course, 80% of the people raise their hands and the other 20% are waiting until later to raise yeah. their hands, right? A little... Oh, procrastination I, know, for you there. I know. Okay. So we're talking about procrastination. Yes. We have to procrastinate a tiny bit. Take a real break here right now. Thanks GCN Genesis communication network and Ted Anderson for putting us on the air all over the world. We'll be back right after this. And we're back. Hello, Adrian Chenault. Hello. Say hi talk, to Noah. Talk about a justification. God told me to keep my phone next, right to, my my next to my head in case I have. <laughs> That's exactly right. So when my wife says, put that phone away, I go, oh yeah, you're going to argue with God. <laughs> yeah, it's great. It's really brilliant. Thank you very much. That's pretty brilliant, Tom. Oh. That is, that's pretty, pretty clever. <laughs> How's it going, Adrian? Good to see you, man. Great to see you. Look I'm... at this. I got an audio voice right now from Ray Higdon. Is that frightening enough? You just bring... See, that was God. Again, see? we We're thought just talking of Ray just talking Higdon and kabam. There he was. And I, I was just talking to him earlier today. So there you it's go. Frightening. Okay, go ahead. Guy. Yeah, congratulations on the new book. I, I love it. And I think it's such an important topic. <clears throat> and so really excited to have you on the show to talk about it today. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I'm glad. Okay, so this is the it. commercial. So contactmapping.com is where you want to go. Yeah. Everybody I go there right now. Huh? I have a question that I want to ask Noah about, about contactmapping.com. I do. Okay. Can I ask it go ahead. All right. Good. Thank you. So Noah. I think that the most important thing for somebody trying to get going in, in transforming their relationships and playing it bigger, the app is almost too easy to use because it, it's just the tool that you need to get it done. But where people I think get stuck is the habits, right? It's those unproductive habits and trying to move into productive habits of following up, of having touch points, of remembering people. And so what would you say to somebody who, say, who says to themselves, I want to have better, stronger relationships. I want to use the contact mapping app, but I need to change my habits in order to get there. Well, this goes back to what I was saying a moment ago, Adrian, about inner game and outer game. All right. So with contact mapping, you have created a beautiful, brilliant outer game platform system methodology for people to grow their business using their relationships. You know, what I, what I would refer to as leverage, right? So everybody has the relationships that you have, but we all want more, right? We all have the money that we have, but we all want more. So you've got to leverage, which in, in what, what I teach is using what you have to get more of what you want. So you created a, a wonderful, fantastic, and very powerful and very simple uh, outer game application 
that can enable people to do that. However, if they still are suffering from what I call head trash, meaning <laughs> I can't do it, right? I can't do it. Oh, I'll, oh, that. why would they listen to me? They, they'll never pick up the phone or blah, 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 whatever their head trash is. Well, then guess what? You need to master your inner game using you know my system. So that's why you and I, I mean, you both of you and, and me and my, both of our companies work extremely well together hand in glove because you've got the tool for the outer game that can help them. And I've got the inner game tools that can also help them get to where they want to go. I got to call bullshit on this whole deal. You guys had to have set this thing up. <laughs> that was just too good a question that was too long that you didn't even pay attention to unless you were reading it. And then you had, did you guys set that uh, up? We did not, but that, there was some some serious You guys <laughs> killed it. I couldn't have done that. That was um, Give me five. That's beautiful. You I, are welcome. Give me a high five. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> wow. How about that? That was that made me cry. <laughs> All right. Well, you can get out of here, man. This commercial's over. Contactmapping.com. Thank you, Adrian. We'll see you in 10 minutes. <laughs>
which is the cue, the cue, the routine, and the reward, right? The reward actually happens in the brain. Now, your brain's job, and this may sound crazy, but your brain's job is to keep you not dead. That's your brain's main job. I'm talking like the lizard brain, the you know that little piece of us that's, that's thousands and thousands of years old. We call it the lizard brain or the croc brain or the ancient brain, whatever you want to call it. The point is, the point is to, of the brain is to make sure you're not dead. Don't die today. Well, what's a great way to not die? Don't do anything you're scared of, right? So when you think of doing that thing, like making that phone call, right? Oh, why don't I call that prospect? Because, you know, maybe I want to talk to her or I, I, I met him at a networking event or whatever it might be, right? And you, what's the instant thing that happens is fear, right? I feel fear. Oh, what if they reject me? What if they don't like me? What if they, you know, call me names? What if, what if, what if, whatever it might be? So that's fear, see? So you have the fear and your brain doesn't want to do that thing that you're afraid of because your brain's job is to keep you not dead, yeah. right? So the reward of doing something else is you get to feel safe, right? You get to not die. And so your brain, that, that part of the brain, right? That ancient brain doesn't care if you're broke, right? It doesn't care if you're not making yeah. any money. It doesn't care if your business isn't growing. It's like, hey man, we didn't die today. So I did my job, right? But then here's the problem that happens. The real, real issue, and this is a hidden thing that people don't realize, Tom, is that then you have the belief that's the fourth element of a habit, the belief that basically says, I can't do it because I can't do it because I'm not good enough. I'm not smart enough. Who would ever listen to me? They'll never take my phone call. I can't grow my business, blah, 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 whatever the negative belief is or, or what I call your head trash. And so that becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. And that's why so many millions and millions of people who've taken all these other classes, they spend all this money on all this other training and yet they're still stuck. So once you learn this power habit system, you can get unstuck. And that's one of the main reasons we help people grow so quickly and have that transformation. All right, we gotta go, believe it or not. You have just talked for a half an hour straight and killed it completely. We love you so much. You need to go drink a little more vodka. And I am going to tell you, I love your wife. I love you. We're going to bring you back on again. We can't live without you. So please write book number 16 as quick as you can. Noah St. John, thanks a million for coming on. We'll see you later, baby. Thank you. My pleasure. Bye. Bye, Bye. We'll be right back. And we are back. Hello. Hello, Adrian. Hello. hello. How are you? How about Noah? Is he a beast or He's what? He's a beast. And now we got Russ. Put attorney's camera on. Yeah. So this is exciting, huh? This is exciting. And you guys, I know you're dying to see the studio. So we're going to let you see the studio because you're all jealous of, you know, how because the whole thing about the bookcase and everything. Now, wait till you see the studio behind me. Nice. Can you put that on the main screen, Jason? Nice. Is that possible? Yeah. So this is very cool. We have a great new producer of the show named Jason Kohler. And, and so, so this, this is how we really look, look here. So, so then, then it goes, it goes here, here to the to other. So this isn't this beautiful? So I thought you guys would all want to see that. Fabulous. <laughs> Thank you, David. That was very nice. <laughs> we needed some, as he would say, affirmations. So that worked out That's perfectly. <laughs> so this is it. Great job, Noah. Yeah. Thanks, David. Noah's I appreciate cool. it, man. <laughs> yeah, and Russ you read the cool. script. That you read the script, Adrian gave you perfectly. Oh that my was... God. Was that a teed up question? Totally and off the cuff. There totally, is no totally way. off the cuff. Things are in sync perfectly when uh, just, when it comes off. I like just that. study my old man, you know. Yeah, that was <laughs> off. That was so do I. <laughs> Yeah. Well, how about Rutz, man? He went right for the vodka too, man. That was a smart move. Dude. Very, very good. Woo. So yeah, so we're going to come back after the break here in about four minutes. But Adrian, talk about contact mapping a little bit. David Rutz, I mean, he's our idol. He is unbelievable. This, this is a guy, this is a guy who I follow when it comes to habits and consistency and showing up because that's who he is. And I mean, just somebody who is a total force for creating an organization, for creating a culture on so many levels. And uh, man, we are lucky to have you in the contact mapping family as well, David. So thank you. Thank you. forgot paragraph two. You yeah, forgot paragraph two. All right, hold on. Hold there on. we go. So have you got a question for thank, me? Thank you so much. Hey, I got to tell you, that's a, that's a kind compliment, Adrian. But you know, my, my app right now is telling me I have 19 follow-ups from today. That's what I love about the app. It reminds me every time I pick it up, I got to, I get, I got to catch up on it. So uh, good stuff. I love the app. That's awesome, man. Yeah. It, it keeps you on track and I'm amazed by how often, you know, that same sort of synchronicity happens where somebody pops up there, you call them because, you know, because you care about them, but because the app reminded you that today was, you know, somewhat the 
arbitrary day that you threw out three months in the future and you call that person up on the phone and they go, I can't believe you called me today. I really needed to hear from you or I was thinking about you or what, you know, it's just, it's incredible how it becomes this tool that has you show up at people in people's lives at just the right time. And they're on my screen and I know you can't see it from there, but you don't need to be able to see it. But my, my most proud moment every morning occurs at about 11 o'clock AM. And what it says in that moment is you are all caught up on follow-ups. And so I won't let, my, I mean, it has become unacceptable behavior to be 19 back. Yes. And, 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 that, and I used to be 119 back. Yeah. I was really good at contact mapping and I thought I was good at follow-up and I gave people lectures on follow-up until, I re until he built this app and I realized I suck. And that was, a, that was harrowing, H-A-R-R-O-W-I-N-G. That right. was hard on me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it is. It's a, it, it's a little, it makes you realize how much is slipping through your fingers that you had no idea about. And that's a little confronting at first and at times still mm -hmm. in the future. But nevertheless, it makes, it, it really keeps that, that situation from people falling through the cracks on you which is just the worst because then something happens and you need them or you realize they needed you and you weren't there or whatever it is. And it's just, that's the worst feeling in the world. And you know what you I find? I yeah. find that when you're in the mood, when you set the reminder to follow up with you, you know, it's the right behavior to do. Right. And then the day comes four days later, two weeks later, and you got something else going on. And you remember setting that follow up two weeks ago, how important it was. And it's a reminder because without it, we wouldn't have that. We I wouldn't anyway remember the mood I was in when I made that follow up appointment. Yeah, if it didn't remind me. Yeah, that's what I love about it. It, it the reminders are perfect. That's, Good stuff. That's huge. I'm going to tell you one more thing about it that I love is at age uh, 68. I'm always doing two things at once. No, at age 68, I can never remember the people I meet. So I, at those 19 people you've got, seven of them, I have no idea who they are. Right. So I pop on their name and I realize I met them down at the Starbucks and, I rem and I've got their blood type. I shoot them a note regarding their blood type and they swallow their cigar because they fought me. They forgot me too. That's what's beautiful about it. Yeah. All right, we're out of here. Contactmapping.com. All right. Love you guys. Well done. All right, wait one sec. And we're back. It is the Tom Chenault Show, and it is a great first half. I hope you love to Noah St. John. He is just such a character, and he's never any different. I love the guy because he's always lifting me up, and I'm already pretty tightly wound. To lift me up takes some effort, but he does it. And I introduced on Facebook earlier this morning about David Rutz. Here is a guy who is, how tall are you, David? Six, seven, six, eight? Six, six. Six, six. Yes. His heart, he's a big guy, but he is all heart. And I don't know that I know many people on this planet who are as good a man in all areas of his life as David Rutz. And I have such profound respect for him. And I have watched this guy get road hard and put away wet and not only come back, but you never even realized he was down. He has stayed on top of his game, leading against all odds since the day I met him. And he has overcome some unbelievable circumstance to do that. And he just gets better. And I said this morning, he was one of the best network marketers I know in my life. And I know the best. And for me to say that says a lot, but I mean it from the bottom of my heart, except my heart's over here. And Dave, sorry about that. Never can really quite remember where that is. But I tell you one thing right now, David, I love you with all of my heart. And thanks for coming on the show. Well, it's an honor, Tom, and thanks. It means a lot hearing you say that. I, you know how much respect I have for you and how you are in this industry and who you are uh, for people in and outside of this industry. I know the heart you have and what you do. So to hear you say that, it means a lot. And I, I'm certainly honored to hear those words come out of your mouth. And of course, you know how I feel about you and all the respect I have. So it's an honor to be here today. You are a peer to me. I mean, you're a guy, you might even be a mentor to me. And you've given me advice over the last couple of years, especially where I was drowning a little bit and you pulled me out of the water. And I want to thank you for that. And I want to ask you how long you've been. I mean, you were with ACN. Was that your first rodeo? Actually, I was with a company called NSA before that. And Bill Gould. I'll be and, darned. Uh, That's team. Great. Yeah. And then uh, we left that. Actually, Tony Kupis, who started ACN, 
and I were childhood friends and he's the one who introduced me to NSA. So when he left to start ACN, I was a part of that uh, team, the field team that started the ACN movement in 1992. So that's what got me into the industry. I love the industry, of course, and um, ended up becoming an owner of my own company in 97. And I have been since. And you went to Michigan State. <laughs> no, Michigan, I got your contact map. That was a joke. So, and uh, you got a, you, and you, you, did you get a master's degree there? A bachelor's degree, BBA, a bachelor's. bachelor's of business, business administration. Okay. So then you went out into the corporate America world. You realized that network marketing was the ticket and you have devoted your life to that. You've owned companies, you've made millions of dollars and you've changed millions of lives. And now you're kind of in a position where you're more excited about network marketing than you've ever been, but there is transformation in the profession going on that needs looked at. Otherwise we miss the wave is what your premise is, right? Absolutely. I, I love the industry. I think uh, the industry, it's been very good for me. It's been good for millions of people. Uh, but unfortunately many people, human nature, you know, doesn't allow everyone to win and everyone who buys a Planet Fitness membership doesn't get in shape. It's, it's not the membership, it's the work ethic and it's the plan and it's the mentorship and it's the training. But we, I believe there's things in the industry that are fabulous and I think there's some evolution that needs to happen and I think it's happening. Um, and fortunately the direct to consumer sales that's going on with Amazon and some of these others are gonna force network marketing companies to get the best at their game. You know, we're going to have to get better at coming out with innovative products at pricing that people can market to customers. And uh, we've got we've got our work cut out for us. And I think the industry will stand up and the leaders of the industry will stand up and the people with integrity in the industry will stand up and we'll answer the call. And there's thousands of people doing it. You're you one were, of them. You were on the forefront of a product called Z Radical. That's where I met you, which was a nutritional product, but you pretty much shifted. And then you then you kind of got into online shopping malls kind of, and now you've literally shifted a lot of your thought process over to the services business where you're actually not even touching a product anymore. You're helping with business loans and credit card processing and credit and travel and things like that. What's yeah. that all about? Well, I believe what my passion is when I got in this industry, someone helped me get out of General Motors. Uh, I worked my butt off part time, right, to, to, to get my residual income where I could quit General Motors. And, and I was always grateful for that individual mentoring me. But I also saw thousands come through the same system who didn't make it. And it's been frustrating me to the point where I would start a company and modify some things that I thought were the answer. And unless people would lose money but still not a higher percentage would make money. And I was, I was always trying to fine tune. And I decided I wanted to start a company, a service-based company where one could make a full-time income without having to build a team. Yet I love network marketing. So I wanted them to be able to build a team. So we got into the service space in 2015, business to business services, where one could go out and market the services, business capital, credit card processing, uh, um, things like telecom, telecom services, healthcare, all non-licensed required services where they could make a full-time income whether they recruited an agent or not. Yet I wanted them because I love the network marketing industry and the, the coaches that it attracts, the teachers that it attracts, the leadership system and development that, that exists. I, I wanted to be able to add that component to a component where you can make full-time money whether you built a team or not. So we've got kind of that perfect hybrid where we've got agents who don't build a team and do very well. And we've got others who are doing very well getting clients, but they're also great coaches, great encouragers, great leaders building teams. Yeah. And I believe that's the proper mix. And, I, and I, I appreciate that because there are so many people that can't do what I do. I am a team builder. I'm a recruiter of people. I'm a terrible salesman. I could not, I am terrible. I'm a terrible salesman. People don't believe that about me, but I haven't got that. I don't even know why it is, but it's always, well, it hasn't been that way. It's just recently that way that I feel like that. But at the end of the day, I like the fact that if they're, and then I sit across the table from people that can sell like crazy, but they couldn't motivate anybody else to do it if their life depended on it. And what I like about the model that you're coming out with is the fact that you can do either one or the other or both and be successful. And what I love about that is the moods that I'm in sometimes, because there's days that I'm not in the mood to be leading the team. I want to go sell something and vice versa. And that's what that does, right? Yeah. And, and, you know, the bottom line is we think business owners are rock stars. We believe they're fueling America and they can't get money from a bank. 
So we don't feel like we're selling. We feel like we're serving them and, and, and offering them an outlet uh, that when they have an opportunity they want to pursue, we've got capital for them and they can get approved. It's not like a big bank loan where it's hard to get approved. So our agents don't feel like they're selling. In fact, we teach don't sell, simply believe in what we're doing, really understand how we're fitting in the marketplace and get out there and just meet, greet and inform everybody of what you do so that when they have a need, we're like a gas station to an Uber driver. Their truck's full now, they don't need gas, but when it's empty, they can't exist without it. That's how working capital is for a business owner. So our agents who get that, they don't, they're not selling anything. They're just getting the word out, putting the world on notice that if you need capital, we're your source. They're not trying to sell a loan. And then when people need it, they come forward. And of course, there's great income in it. Let's go back to the Uber drivers, because I think going along with the contactmapping.com conversation, as you're driving the Uber everywhere around town and all you Uber and Lyft drivers and all you Instacart people that are taking people around, you've got people in the back seat that need all kinds of stuff. And if you're just multi-dimensional, one dimensional on nutrition, for instance, or skin care or hair care, you're pretty much dead in the water. But if you're that Uber driver driving around where you've got a little pallet full of products, where you're able to just whatever that person in the back wants to buy, you've got for them, instead of you being this agenda driven network marketer, I mean, that really makes professional network marketers out of people because they're learning to fill a need instead of jam something down somebody's throat, right? Absolutely. And, you know, we, the bottom line is with this, with any service, whether it's a nutrition, like the Z Radical product you mentioned, we still market it. I still love it, right? Uh, if you believe in what you're marketing, you're not selling it then. You've heard that cliche, but you see it over and over. People get in to make money and they don't really believe in the service or product they're marketing. And so then they are out pitching it and selling it and, and trying to close people. We teach anti-sales, right? We're t constantly telling people, share what you believe and uh, you'll attract people who believe what you believe. And don't worry about those who don't believe it. So if it's healthcare, if it's skincare, if it's uh, uh, nutrition services, if it's uh, financial services, whatever it is, if you don't believe in it, find something you believe in. But like Tom says, if we have more things to market, if, as long as you believe in all of them, and, and, and when you share what you believe, they, people can feel it. They can feel you mean it. They can feel you care. And then the commissions will track you down because you're, you're leading with the mission rather than leading with the commission you're going to make. Richard Brooks said something the other day. He said the, the gravity holds things to the ground. And the gravity of network marketing is the resignation, cynicism, and despair of the people around you. And mm. you've got to rise above that and launch. Yes. Otherwise, you're going to stay right where you are. And I believe that that gravity is defied when you embrace the model of network marketing instead of play like you aren't one and you're using all these different terms to fake like you're some sort of corporate America biggie wiggy and instead of just embracing the model. What do you think about that? I, I think not only that, the, the network marketing mindset that stops people, it's also the what do my friends think? There's a lot of people on the football field. Imagine Tom Brady being on the field, worrying about what pe the people in the stands are thinking about them. And so many people get in our industry and they step back in the packet and they want to they want to throw a touchdown, but they're worried about what everyone in the stands is thinking, what their neighbor thinks, what their brother's-in-law thinks. And the bottom line is we, our, what, what can flow out of our mouths, if we believe in it, if it flows out of our mouths, it'll attract customers, it'll attract teams, it'll coach teams. You care about people. What happens is we congest our own flow. We have thoughts, we have pride, we have insecurities, we have things that what, what Noah was talking about, that inner trash, I think he called it, but we stop the flow from coming out of us. We do. It's not our industry. It's not our product. It's not our corporation. It's not a paycheck, whether it's a day late or not. That's not a difference maker. It's not whether the product's on back order for three days. That's not a difference maker. The difference maker is what is my friend going to think if I approach them about this? I shouldn't talk to that person because they're already rich. I shouldn't talk to that person because they don't have enough money. I shouldn't. We have so much self-talk barriers to success that we put ourselves and yet we blame everything outside of us. So I agree, not only is the industry, do we put funny terms on it to feel better about it, but I've already tried tweaking everything you can imagine, all the complaints I've ever heard in the industry, tried removing them all. And it doesn't change the percentages of the people who succeed because it doesn't change human nature. I love that. 
I don't like cubicles. You're going to have a tough time convincing me, no matter how much money you pay me, that I want to have a life in a cubicle. And on the other side, and I understand how those people in the cubicle believe that what I do is crazy. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to try to convince the cubicle people if they won't try to convince me. In the name of the game, I'm telling all you watching, and I'm watching who's watching this thing. I've got a bunch of my cubicle friends watching that have disdain about network marketing. Don't. Embrace the model. It'll change your life. We're coming back right after this with the Tom Chenault show. And we're back. I almost forgot the name of the show. <laughs> Aren't we changing it? What are we changing it to? The network marketing leadership show. That's the first time I've said that out of my mouth. When's that wow, going to I like it. I like it. So no, is that a green it. screen? Behind? That, that, that backdrop then is green screened? Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, change it around so he knows that. In fact, it says Noah St. John back there. Oh, dear. <laughs> yeah, maybe we can flip like that around. around. The whiteboard eraser. Oh, there it goes with David Rutsch. You hey! see that? <laughs> oh, hey, mackerel. That was a very nice way for you to tell us <laughs> that it was wrong. <laughs> Unbelievable. I, my we, uh, we, had, just, we had David up when Noah was on, so Noah. Yeah. Holy mackerel. We're, just... We're terrible contact. <laughs> We're con terrible. So what I love about David Rutz is his kids are working in the business with him. I got to meet, I know. obviously Addison. I know his Addison, the, the tall kid, but his daughter we got to meet who was unbelievable. So cool. It's, yeah. it's so awesome to see you doing that and to see your whole family doing it together. And I, I've gotten to interact with Addison a lot more. And, it, you know, just it, number one, he's like a carbon copy. That's it's it's yeah. almost, it's a little spooky, but he is just, you know, he, Plus he's also he's, a tree. Yeah. Talk yeah. He's got and he's got your heart, man. I just love that. And it's so cool to see you guys doing this together. Yeah, yeah we yeah. have a blast. My 18 year old Tyler is just getting started too. look out. How oh, many man. Kids, how many you how many kids do you have? You little multi-level marketing duplicating machine. <laughs> hey. Unbelievable. Like I said, we've tried all the different avenues of how to build a team. So that's, <laughs> well, right. yeah, that's, right. Oh, that's exactly your plan. That's, plan. that's, Birth right, them, that's cool news. <laughs> it's yeah, like the so old farmers, I, right? It's how you, you how you manage to farm. So that's right, man. That's exactly right. How important are relationships, David? I mean, remembering things about people and I mean, you're a master at it. Isn't it like a hundred percent of the game? Well, I wouldn't say I'm a master at it. I appreciate you saying that. I feel every day that I fall short. So I love things like this constant contact, I'm sorry, this contact mapping app because um, it constantly reminds me of who I need to contact. So um, I, I think it, there's nothing more important, right? I mean, this is a relationship business. We say that all the time, but we're only as good as the connections we have. And our teams, Tom, you say it all the time, someone's gonna love on your team more than you if you're not loving on them most. And people go where they're feeling valued. They don't go where the most money is. There's a lot of companies that offer great incentives here and there, and um, people just follow their hearts. They got to feel a part of something. So that matters most. And, and I think you hit on something really important there, which is, you know, a lot of times when we, when we talk about contact mapping or when people first hear about it, they're thinking about it in terms of how it's going to help them recruit. And it is going to transform the way you recruit. But where some magic really can happen, I think, in the network marketing profession that people tend to, gl to gloss over at first is really one of the biggest mistakes that people early in their network marketing career make is that they recruit, 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 finally get somebody to say yes, say thank you so much, you're going to be great, and they move on to the next person and they forget about that person, or at least they show as though they've forgotten about that person and they're not calling them, they're not staying in front of them, they're not loving on them, they're not reminding them of their why. And that's almost the most important thing because if you can get your retention higher in this business, things really shift because you got to keep people interested and plugged in long enough to have success, right? Right. What's up, book? I, I, I got it. You just reminded me of something. One of my favorite books. This is a book written years ago by Art Williams. It's called Pushing Up People. He wrote it for his own team. But this puppy right here, and, and there's a Primerica office right next door to me. I swear I play Art Williams more than they do. And I've got him on my YouTube blasting all the time. This is all about pushing up your team and what to do with your team. Don't, and, and everything in here is a principle on what to talk. I don't even know if you can get this anymore. I thought you could see, you don't see many books that look like this anymore. Yeah, no but kidding. It's all about what you do with your team. All about it. It's the most important thing. There's inner heroes in everyone out there. But if you're not helping to wake them up, sometimes they never wake up. We need to be that 
pulse, yeah. you know, that's, that's that electronic pulse that they need sometimes. And it doesn't mean they're dependent reps. They're independent reps, but they got a lot going on in their lives. And until this becomes a priority, it's not a priority. And we can help it stay a priority in their lives by us plugging into them. And that's what this app does most, is it helps follow up with the people in your team once Amen. you have it. All right, we're coming back right after this. Stick around. And we're back. We got David Rutz and what a rock star he is. Look at that smile. He is adorable. We love him. Uh, Adrian wrote me a note and said, can I stay on the show the rest <laughs> of the show with you? Because he loves you so much. That is hurtful to me. And uh, but that's good. I mean, he's he's good. He's the father I never had. He's the father <laughs> I never had. That is so sad. That's probably true. And uh, what's so sad about that is it's true. But here's the deal. But I was a good <laughs> friend. I guess I was whatever I was. Adrian is such a great kid because I was such a terrible example. Let's just face facts and keep it going. So here's the deal. And then he leaves me hanging. So David Rutz, going back to what you just said, if you're not calling your organization and your leaders, the competition probably is. Mm -hmm. And I got a text this morning from a guy in the Philippines who had a big team of leaders from another company that he wanted to bring to me. And I was sure that he wanted money. So I just sent a note to the owner, the president of that company. And I said, look, you know, this guy's shopping a bunch of people down there. And he said, that guy, I've never even heard of that guy. He's shopping a bunch of tea. He's trying to pick your pocket, Tom, but we don't even call these people that rank name. But the fact of the matter is everybody's trying to get your leaders and you're an idiot if you're not calling your people. As a company owner, as a company president, as a sales manager, as a vice president of sales, whatever you are, if you're not calling your leaders, the competition is. Do you believe that? 100%. Do you believe that, David? Absolutely. You know, each one of our leaders is like, if you own McDonald's corporate, every leader is like a corporate rest, a corporate store or one of your locations selling burgers. And if you're not following up with that just to see how it's doing, not caring about it, eventually it's going to close down. And or someone's gonna pickpocket and take it away and change the sign to Burger King, right? Uh, our leaders are, you know, the, the bottom line is they're good. They're, they're, they're rare, right? It's a rarity to get someone who brings it out of themselves and becomes a leader. And if we forget that, if we forget who they are because they are independent, they don't forget that we're forgetting them. And that whole story, they're supposed to call us, that duplicates downhill. So nobody's calling anybody. They're all waiting for the other guy to call. And guess what? It's not going to happen. It's going to be hand grenade city. Uh, the guy building my house, this Steve Long, doing a beautiful job. The guy looks like a movie star and he's my wife's age. You think I'm not over there every day with flowers, making sure my wife's not going, holy mackerel. Look at that tool belt and those rippling muscles. <laughs> and look at Tom. Hell, I'm over there with flowers and bottles of wine and all kinds of stuff just to fend it off because that's what we have to do. And I hate to break it to you. It's the same thing with your network marketing leaders. Now I have to see if Denise is watching this show. <laughs> it's unbelievable, but it's a fact. That, you agree? That check She's doing the house right now. I'm a yeah, she's, she's over at the house. house. Yeah, they're <laughs> testing the hot tub. Yeah, that's just not. Yeah, so you guys, I'm just telling you, keep your eyes open on the main thing. And the main thing in your network marketing business are your leaders. I was just talking to Gordon, whatever his name was. He's a huge Nestor, Gordon Nestor. He's been in the business forever. He's on the board of the DSA. He said the number one malady of companies is when they forget their number one asset is their field and their field leaders. Absolutely. And it's the truth. Absolutely. And we can companies, say what we are, want. companies are created by the people in the field. They're not created by the founders of the company or the, I've been a founder of a company. I know you can have a great idea and put it all on paper and tell people about it, but it's when the leaders grab it and build it. That's who builds the companies. It's not the president. It's not the CEO. They have a job, take care of the bus, make sure the wheels stay on the bus, but the people driving the bus are the people out in the streets talking to new people, sitting across living rooms. And those are the kings and queens of this industry. And guess what? We can look at corporate and say, corporate's got to remember, but each one, every, every person watching this who's in network marketing, you're corporate too. You are the leader of your team. That's you're the exactly leader right. of your team. So are you taking care of your team? Are you loving on your team the way you think the corporate office should love on everybody? Wow. What incentives are you running? I, well, I got to look at the time. I'm going to timestamp this thing right now. So, because somebody, 
I, that is a brilliant and profound statement that I wish I would have thought of and used on somebody two days ago. Unbelievable. Thank you, David Rutz. That is big time. And you guys need to remember that because I'm telling you, David Rutz has been around the block like I have. And here's this new generation coming up in this profession. And we've got to teach them that their heart leads the day, not their looks, not their stuff, but how they treat other human beings, especially the people coming into the business, right? Absolutely. It's, it's the bottom line is the front line, the new people, the new people are the new energy and there may be leaders and we've put in our time and we've built the markets and we've paved the, we've, we've uh, blazed the trails, if you will. But guess what? The weeds have regrown. We need new trailblazers and they're 22 and they're 26 and they're 31 and they have a different mindset. Uh, but some of the same old stuff, the same old stuff, the same principles, the human nature principles haven't changed. We may communicate through a phone. We may communicate with our pop socket. We may pull Facebooks and stuff and do this instead. I'm sitting in a training center right now. I do most of the trainings right here on the screen, but there's nothing that beats when we have a live room right next door. Millennials or not, there's nothing that beats people coming together face to face, that body language, that communication, that heart. Um, lead with your heart, lead by serving. You can go make a lot of money, set big goals, but if you focus on the big money, you won't ever achieve it. If you do, it'll be short-lived because you'll build it the wrong way and it'll disappear as fast as you build it like so many people have had in this industry. Build takes, it the right way, it never goes away like what Tom Chenault's done. It takes hard work and it takes a long time and you will be frustrated, but it will be worth it. Okay, so how do people get a hold of you before we get out of here, David? Well, uh, they could email me, uh, David at DavidAllenCapital.com, David at DavidAllenCapital.com. And of course, anything else would be a promotion on my website. So don't worry about that. Just email me. If, you, if I can ever help you with anything, give me a buzz. I love this guy. We'll be gone. We'll be next week, Holton Bugs and Louis Ariaza. We'll see you all next week. I love you all. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. You bet. Beautiful job, David. The show after the show starts now. <laughs> That's so... Noah, if you're still watching, is he still here? Yeah. Look at Noah. Isn't he adorable? Stuck on the whole time. That's awesome. Yeah. So the name of the game, David, and we quoted Noah a lot through the show. He's a good man. And uh, David Rutz, you are truly special to us, and we love you. Well, thank Sorry, you. I took love you guys, too. Uh, you know, oh. that the path <laughs> we went down on communication from, you know, you got to call your people. You got to let them know that they're the most important people. I've got about six people who drive my paycheck. And the minute I start looking past them to whatever is on the other side of them and I, that they start feeling forgotten, somebody's gonna come along and pick them off. And I am committed that I don't let that happen. And you know, somebody just said, I didn't get recognized at the 20th convention. I can't believe they didn't recognize me. And I should have said, how much are you recognizing? It was one of your upline ruts. And I should have said, how much are you recognizing your up your t your leaders? Because it's on us as much as it is them. Right and on. if it's on me as much as it is the people I complain about. And if right I'm on. not calling my people, they have permission to call me on it. And uh, that was beautifully said by you. Thank well, you. Thank you, sir. No, I need right. to get one of your books. I'll be ordering it. Looking forward to reading it. Awesome. I'm Thanks still here, guys. Um, yeah, well, turn your camera on, you little mutt. Um, Marianne is not allowing me to. Hey, uh -oh. there you go. How you doing? <laughs> she does off. Say, Hello, I'm still she here, guys. I heard everything. Hold on, A.L. Williams. And he and David brought you up a couple of times in the show. I know. I heard. Thank you so much. What's I up, appreciate Paul? you, David. Yeah, let's get let's get in touch. I, I, I'd love to uh, uh, connect further. Yes. Let me, uh, can I get your, give me the, yeah. give me the way, best way to get a hold of you. I'll send you his contact map, maniac, man. That's what I'm in the business of. Okay, You'll even have my favorite picture of him and his wife, because he's ugly, but his wife is smoking. <laughs> um, so She's like yours, best. Marlo Rott's a comedian. I know. Man. A Christian comedian. Is that crazy enough? It is crazy. We need to, if we can turn her into a Christian MLM comedian, we could put her on the, she could she could own the circuit, David. She's speaking right now at a church tonight. She's taking over. I can't stop her. She's and your basement and your basement is remodeled to be a comedy club. Is that correct? 
Well, it's a it's a comedy club when it's comedy, but it does she does small groups. She's it's a it's a spiritual thing. So it looks like a club when all the lights are out and the spotlights are on. Yeah, you walk down there, you it's got brick walls. You think you're in a comedy club. What's her Hunter website? People. What's her yeah, website? Cup the cubby hole. It's a private. She does it private, but it's it's she calls it the cubby hole. It's a place she had in her in her grandma's basement. It was always real warm and comforting for her. So that's why she named it the cubby hole. I'll put some pictures up. I'll yeah, invite plus, you to the page. And of course, you guys, go to Marlo, M-A-R-L-O, Rutz, R-U-T-Z, and I just Google her because a bunch of her clips are up there. And the woman is funny, truly funny. I wanted her to speak at the a and I mean, she's that good. And so, yeah, tell her to change, change it, spin it a little bit to MLM and we're rich. Well, we've <laughs> got plenty of comedy about MLM. I'm into that. All right. <laughs> Everybody, oh, thanks, guys. Thanks, love so you all. Thank you. See you later. Hey, Brad. David, I just I just uh, sent you my contact info. Oh, I great. just sent it to you. Uh, now, thank you. Man. now I'm out of the middle of that deal. <laughs> Appreciate it, Noah. See you later, oh, you guys. Love came you. Came up. I have twenty now on my thing. Thank Look you. At that. Right. See yeah. you later. See ya. Thank you. Guys. Bye, everybody. Take Bye, care. everybody. Bye. Awesome.